what's our plan for today? Today we are going to be installing a diesel, diesel power source three-piece exhaust manifold on a 5.9 24-valve second-gen Cummins. This will be replacing a uh, cracked stock manifold. Yeah, I already like the look of this thing. So let's flip this truck around. Let's do a start on it. It's been sitting in this spot now for about two weeks. So I'll set you down and you can uh, see what the exhaust pipe does. So here's a video that's going to overlap with the replacement of this cracked exhaust manifold and the replacement of the stock 1999 Cummins 24 valve turbo diesel exhaust. Uh, replacing that with a 5 inch diamond eye exhaust with the flow through muffler. Um, I have sprayed the hardware with uh, penetrating oil and it's actually not going too bad. I haven't, uh, haven't broken anything yet. The turbo's loose. All four nuts are off. One, two, three, and that's four. I've got that in there just holding it in position. I just got the two off here. I need to get the exhaust out of the way. Things are a little crusty down there so that's going to take a minute. But if I can just slide this turbo back to get this exhaust manifold off and not pull it completely apart because uh, I don't really want to do the oil line. Although I will if I have to. Let me see if I can get away without it. Be right back. Well, that went. Oops. Ay, ay, ay. That went pretty smoothly. It's a good opportunity now to check the block for any cracks or leaking freeze plugs. Although I was pretty thorough when I bought this thing to lay on my back, scratch around up there and uh, look around with a flashlight. But I think we're in pretty good shape. Like I said, it wasn't horrible. I loosened the uh, turbo clamps. I'm not going to pull the turbo all the way out, although I did take the, the fuel, re uh, the oil return line here. I didn't disconnect this one. That'll just toggle back. I don't take too much part. Let's take a look at the old manifold and let me show you a pretty good reason uh, to, to replace it. Here's what we were left with, and I'm no expert, but that looks like a crack right there. And that looks like a crack there. This is the part you could see from above, right? This is the top of the manifold. So I got a crack from there to there. I crack from there to there. And then you flip it over. <laughs> I actually spotted that first when I was laying on my back looking for cracks in the block. Now that's the first dark line that I see. This is just penetrating well. I do have to extract these studs. Hopefully they'll come out because I don't believe the new one has studs. I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure that it doesn't. But this cracked all the way to here. It's interesting such a powerful engine can just come out through these two you know exhaust out through these two cute little ports so let's take this perfect opportunity to line these things up the old and the new manifold. Let me go grab the new one. Structurally it looks like it's gonna line up. I haven't put this up to the truck yet but it looks like these pipes here the runners here are larger diameter on the new one and there's definitely a difference in the ports these are smaller if you take, let me see if I can do this with one hand. If you take the old turbo gasket, which I already had thrown in the garbage, you'll see there's there's over, right, overlap. And if you take that and line it up here, there's less, a little bit less. I don't know. It's not immensely different, but we'll see. They claim it's not so much the air, the increasing the airflow as it is increasing the efficiency of the airflow. So we'll see how that works. Either way, that's the way that's going to work. This has threaded ports here and here, and one here. So I, I am going to get an exhaust gas, an EGT, a pyrometer. Uh, probably in this one, right? We'll see which size it is, but it'll go on the top. And then we come around to here. Well, see, that's interesting. This end one is a straight shot. And look at how it's cut in. Look at how this one here has to, it run, this exhaust runs into that part, that restriction, and before it gets into the uh, collector there. Same with that one, those two center. 
which I guess is uh, cylinders three and four, and then that one is reduced, and that one's open. It's interesting. And then let's look at this one. This one's wide open. Oh, except for those still, the center ones are slightly reduced. Interesting. Very interesting. I don't know. Don't need that one. There he goes. Yep. Scrap metal buddy's gonna be happy for me. This goes in the pile. I'm just line this thing up and see how we do. I know this probably goes without saying, but by saying that, I've already gone with saying it. So I'll just go ahead and say it. When you've got a three-piece manifold like this that's press fit, you want to make sure that you start all your bolts by hand loosely first. Get all 12 of them to line up, make sure all the holes line up, and then you go ahead and tighten things down. That just goes even with a, a solid manifold. Um, but this is just in case I need to do any modifications or this little tippy tappy or even heat that up a bit to get things to just move a smudge. But what I'm doing, basically, I just put that bolt in to hold it in alignment. I am putting anti-seize. Where's my anti-seize? I'm putting some anti-seize thread lubricant on these bolts. They didn't have any before. There weren't any issues with getting them out, quite honestly. They all came out easily. But uh, I'm going to put it on there just because, I don't know, because I am. And uh, this way I'll get all five cylinders with gaskets lined up just right. And then I'll do that, that back one there. And uh, let's keep on. That was pretty slick. <clears throat> Everything's tightened down. It lined up. Everything fit just right. One thing it didn't include, and I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining it didn't include the nut and bolt to hold your uh, heater core. This is the water line for the heater core to the bracket. They did give you the bracket that bumped out because you're no longer putting it into the head bolt there. Uh, but it didn't have a nut and bolt, which is kind of odd because it had everything else in here. But this thing's snugged up. I'm gonna go extract the uh, studs out of the old manifold. Bolt this turbo back on. Oh yeah. So everything's bolted up, lined up, and for all intents and purposes, this exhaust manifold made by a, excuse me, diesel power source. This is the DPS-X. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it's done and I'm extremely impressed with how easily everything lined up. I've used aftermarket exhaust manifolds on gas engines before. Um, I'm relatively new to the diesel world but I've got uh, several, well not several, I've got a couple decades of gas engine repairs, major repairs under my belt and these aftermarket exhaust manifolds or headers or uh, the such, they don't always tend to line up, but this one just slid right into place. I didn't have to do anything. The turbo lined right up. The studs that were in the old exhaust manifold dropped easily, uh, were easily able to come out, which is still making me happy and smile. I'm not sure why every bolt on here is cooperating up to this point, but I can say that up to this point because my intercooler clamps are all snug down again. My oil return line is snug down. We place the gasket on that between the turbo housing and the oil return line. And I put a new gasket here between the exhaust manifold and the turbo. So anyhow, that's where we set. Everything's uh, ready to go. I'm ready to crack open that box of that Diamond Eye 5 inch exhaust, five inch exhaust. So enough talking, I'm gonna shut this camera off and set it down and start the next series of videos, which will be the installation of this Diamond Eye. All right, gotta go, gotta run, see ya.